Geçmişten günümüze kadar bildiğimiz birçok sistemi ortaya çıkmasında öncülük etmiş bu soylar ve hizmetkarları yaklaşık 200 yıl önce kapitalist finans sistemini sanayi devrimi ile beraber tam manasıyla İngiltere ve Amerika'da uygulamaya soktular. Bugün dünyada her ülkenin para birimi ve banka sistemi vardır. Bilirsin bu kapital sistemin daha da gelişmesi için ihtiyaç duyulan en önemli şey ucuz işçidir. Bunun için 18. yüzyıldan itibaren daha fazla nüfusa ihtiyaç duyuldu. Afrikalı siyahiler ile başladılar. Yani bedava işçi, tam kölelik düzeniyle. Bu sistem Amerika Birleşik Devletleri'nin güney eyaletlerinde başarıyla işliyordu. Bununla beraber Avrupa'dan Amerika'ya gelen ucuz işçiler ve büyüyen şirketlerle sistem büyümeye devam etti. Daha fazla nüfus, daha çok üretim ve tüketim, daha fazla savaş, daha fazla girişmişlik arzusu vesaire. Bunların hepsi teknolojinin gelişmesini sağlıyordu. Bu geleneksel kapitalist sistem teknoloji istenilen düzeye gelene kadar devam edecekti. Bu geleneksel kapitalist sistem teknoloji istenilen düzeye gelene kadar devam edecekti. Bugün artık bu istenilen seviyeye çok yaklaşmış durumdayız. On sekizinci yüzyıl ve sonrasında kapitalizm daha çok insana ihtiyaç duyduğu için dünya nüfusunu artıracak politikaları uygulamaya soktular. Çünkü kapitalizm büyüdükçe savaşlar büyüyor, kaos artıyor, bu bağlamda teknoloji gelişiyor, devletler boşlandırılıyor ve kendi şirketleri daha da büyüyordu. İnsan para ile rahatça kontrol edilebilir hale getiriliyordu. Böylece insanların hayatta kalabilmesi için ihtiyacı olan şeyleri sisteme dahil ettiler. Başta barınak, temiz su, kolay ulaşılabilir gıdalar, sağlık sisteminin gelişmesi, ilaçlar ve aşılar. Bütün bunlar üremeyi ve insan ömrünü artıracak, çocuk ölümlerini azaltacaktı. Kısacası geçtiğimiz 200 yıl boyunca yapılan bu uygulamalar insan nüfusunu artıracak etkenlerdi. Üstelik geçtiğimiz 100 yıl savaşlardan, afetlerden, krizlerden, açlıktan, baskıcı devlet rejimlerinden ve hastalıklardan milyonlarca insan Ölmesine rağmen dünya nüfusu 100 yılda 6 kat artmıştı. Ayrıca tıbbi gelişmeler, üremeyi engelleyen ilaçlar, kürtaj, birçok cinsel koruma yöntemleri, eşcinsellik ve pornografi ve buna benzer birçok etken de dünyadaki bu nüfus artışını durduramamıştır. Düşün. Bu olayların hiçbiri yaşanmasaydı, dünya kendi haline bırakılıp teknolojiyle, insan ahlakıyla ve bildiğimiz aile yaşantısıyla devam etseydi, bugün dünya nüfusu 12 milyardan fazla olacaktı. Ama sistem insanların üremesindeki yolu açarken nüfusun bir kısmını çeşitli yollar ile azaltarak, kurdukları sistemin daha da fazla gelişmesine katkıda bulundu. Nasıl mı? Mesela dünya savaşları olmasaydı teknoloji bugünkü seviyesine asla ulaşamazdı. Soğutma sistemlerinden lazer teknolojilerine, 
uçaklardan bilgisayar ve internet teknolojisine kadar birçok teknoloji savaşların, krizlerin, salgın hastalıkların neticesinde ortaya çıkmıştır. Çünkü herkes bir Nikola Tesla değildi. Bilimi bilim için yapmıyordu. İnsanlara fayda için üretim araçları keşfedilmiyordu. Asıl amaç kendileri için teknolojinin istenilen seviyeye gelmesiydi. Yani insanlığın kan kontrolü. Ama şu var ki burada insanlara sunulan asıl amaç her zaman para oldu. Bu yoluyla insan kontrol edilebilir bir köle haline getirildi. Parayı aradan çıkarırsanız bugünkü bilim insanlarının çoğu araştırmayı bırakır. O yüzden para düzenin işleyişindeki en önemli araç olmuştur. Neden birçok iyi bilim adamı Amerika Birleşik Devletleri'ni veya diğer gelişmiş Batı ülkelerini tercih ediyor? Sonuçta kendilerine imkanlar sunulmasa ve yaşam için kaliteli standartlar verilmese bilime sınırlı sayıda insan yönelir. Ya da zoraki yöntemlerle o insanlara bilim yaptırılmaya çalışılır. Ama günümüz dünyası çok farklı. Parayı daha rahat kontrol edebilmek için özellikle Başkan Nixon'la beraber altın standartından çıkıldı. We must protect the position of the American dollar as a pillar of monetary stability around the world. Bugün Amerika'da rahat rahat sınırsız para basabiliyorlar. Yeter ki karşılarına bir kriz gelsin. Zaten günümüzde etkilerini fazlasıyla görebiliyoruz. Kısacası günümüzde gelişmiş ekonomilerde para bilim için sorun olmaktan çıkarıldı. Para sistemi olmasaydı ne büyük savaşlar ne de bu seviyede yüksek bir teknoloji olurdu. Z konuşmaya devam ediyor. Bu karanlık soylar direkt olarak negatif çağrışımlar ve şeytani öğelerden beslenerek planlarını uygularlar. Plan yapıcılar planlarını kendilerinden sonraki gelecek kişilere aktararak asıl hedefe ulaşmaya çalışmaktadırlar. Ve kendi soylarından olacak ya da seçilmiş kişilerden oluşan bu kişiler düzenli olarak bu hiyerarşi içinde devam etmektedir. İnsanları da bu doğrultuda yönlendirirler. Bazen bu yönlendirmeler direkt devletler aracılığıyla yapıldı. A new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. We begin to see the climax of a major change in society, the climax of a new world order. And we begin to see a type of integration between information technology and trade. We begin to see the economy, politics, culture, and ideology being transported simultaneously from nation to nation. And with this technology, with the ability to transport ideas, the very value systems of people, the way that they eat, what they enjoy to do, how they enjoy recreation, their racial concepts, their culture, their ideology being transported all around the world, a type of globalization. And with this boom in the information technology and with this major event that takes place, now it comes to a culmination and it starts to reach a high point. And so the innocent people, we look at this and we say, what is going on? What is happening to the world? that had so many different varying views, different nations, different ways of approaching things that can complement each other. Now we see politics, 
is stripped of real power, that the economy governs all social exchange. We see that the states serve the financial powers, power structures, that the real power is no longer in the hands of the generals, but the real power now switching to the hands of the people who run the economy, to the banking systems. And then we see that politicians play the role of public relations offices only to control the masses, either by lulling them to sleep or by terrorizing them. And then we see that the masses of the people become helplessly preoccupied. Their lives are now bombarded with a series of cultural events. And these cultural events start to become the most important things in their lives. Son yıllarda daha çok medya ve popüler kişiler aracılığıyla düzenli olarak uygulandı. The greatest hypnotist on planet Earth is a oblong box in the corner of the room. It is constantly telling us what to believe is real. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same things that they are true without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control the truth. Exactly what people think, and this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely da dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. Dangerous, extremely dangerous to our democracy. Extremely dangerous to our democracy. What's happening is we are being hypnotized from cradle to grave by people like this. News readers, politicians, teachers, lecturers. We're being programmed to see the world in a certain way. Seher is a reality in the world and people practice magic. And one of the practices is, is through the eyes, seducing the eyes in television and, and spectacle. It's the Seher of the Ayyun. Now I want to interpret this hadith. Hasir is a mat, it's a matrix, it's like this. It, it, it has vertical and horizontal, and it's, it's a mat. And, and the Prophet said that the fitin will be shown to the hearts like a, a, a mat. Udan, Udan. It has two lines, a horizontal and vertical line. This is the TV set. This is the, this is the set. It's a hasir, it's a mat. And the Prophet said the fitin will be shown to the hearts like a mat. Kalhasir, and this is how Shaitan is destroying the hearts by showing them the fitan on these films and on TV over and over again until people just become accustomed to violence. If you look, re re all of the research that we have indicates that media violence has increased in quantity, but it's also more graphic, more sexual, and more sadistic. This is the khutawat Shaitan. If you watch films from the 1940s, the 1930s, the 1950s, see, you can see, it's slow. This is how shaitan gets people. He pulls them step by step. These are his khutawat. You start watching films, they've introduced violence. These are the khutawat of shaitan. And shaitan wants violence and sex are his two, these are because they're very powerful for the human psyche. And these are the two ways that he can really corrupt the heart. This is from the United States, so I'm using statistics from the U.S., but, but it's all coming to you, unfortunately. 80% of R-rated movies, right? 70% of restricted video games, and 100% of music with explicit content, warning labels, were being marketed to children under 17. So they know what they're doing. These are the minions of shaitan. Whether they're conscious of it or not, they're unconscious. If you say, We believe in freedom of speech, we believe in artistic expression. 
We're not sowing corruption. No, they're the corruptors. But they're unaware. So many of them are literally minions. By the time the average child in the United States is 18 years old, they will have seen 200,000 acts of violence and 16,000 murders. Our children have been programmed to be violent. This is the average time spent watching television, 5.11 hours in the United States every day. 99% of households that possess at least one TV, 2.4 TV sets in the average US household, right? Because some have five, some have one in every room. 56 percentage of Americans who pay for cable TV. 49% say they watch too much TV. Amazing. 34 hours per week over the age of two spent in front of a TV. 24 hours per week, two to 11 spent watching TV. 54% of four to six year olds who, when asked to choose between watching TV and spending time with their fathers, preferred television. Average American youth, 900 hours in school, 1,200 hours watching TV, right? By the time they get out of high school. It's amazing. 16,000 number of 30 second TV commercials seen in a year. And you know what they call these? Now an important message from our sponsor. Message in Arabic is Risala. This is the real reason they want you to buy and consume their goods because it's a consumer civilization. Cartoons are very serious. This, this uh, cartoon is was done, it's for adults. The man that does this cartoon, literally, he's an atheist, doesn't believe in anything, makes fun of everything, cynicism, everything's a joke. Kids watch this show, it's a very sophisticated show. This is all about ghosts and, and demons and the occult, the Scooby-Doo has all these occult themes in it. You've got all these cartoons here now, and your kids are growing up on this crap. And you really have to think seriously, garbage in, garbage out. You have to think seriously about what's being done to your children's minds if you're letting them watch TV. Children imitate what they see. Now, Maleficent, you could see, see Disney, they used to have films where the witch was evil and, and now they entice them. This is the fitna. They make a beautiful, see, they used to make them old hags. If you, if you see the old film, the witch was old hag, but we get them by degrees. Now they take somebody that many people consider a very beautiful woman and, and they put her in Bofemet's mask and then it becomes seductive. He takes people by degrees. I mean, what is this? Why are they doing this? Why are you wearing horns? We're human beings, we're not demons. And then you can see these signs. Why do they use these symbols? Why is there so much one-eye symbolism amongst these entertainers? I've never seen any normal person do that. Why do they do this? Because this is their religion. They worship the, the, the one-eyed God. Why are they preparing our children for one-eyed characters? Why? Why do they all do these one-eyes? What, what's going on? Why are all their symbols with one eye? Angelica's County 911, what's the address of the emergency? Yes, ma'am, I, I, um, I just shot my daughter and shot all my grandkids, and I'll be sitting on my step, and when you get here, I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> Don Spirit. They're, they're, every one of them are dead. Uh, you said your name is Don Spirit? Yep. All right, Don, what kind of gun do you have? It doesn't matter what kind of gun I got. They're all dead, and then when you get here, I'll shoot myself and then you figure out what kind of gun it is. And you know, when you're watching television, you go into a brainwave state that is akin to being in a hypnotic trance. And so much is fed to, through that system subliminally as well as actually um, to get us to see the world in a certain way. They want to manipulate what is in our heads so that we see the world they want us to perceive.
goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers. When comes, there's no protection. Now there's no roof because the satellite goes through the roof. So it's beamed into your house. You don't have the protection of your home anymore. What did the Ashab al-Kahf do? They fled to the cave, right? And that will protect you from the Dajjal. Be in your cave, guard yourself against these things. Your home is Darul Islam. Guard your home, protect your home. Don't invite shaitan in. Protect your children. They're pure, they're innocent. Look at them, they're just, they're beautiful. They're, they're ready to, to, to learn La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah by fitrah. They'll believe what you tell them. But if you put them in front of these things, they'll stop believing.